Hey everyone, it's awesome Lego 1138 here with another video called War of the Worlds Chapter 1, The Eve of the War. So basically what happened is each of us made a movie based off a chapter in the book, War of the Worlds. Like I did Chapter 1, someone did Chapter 2, someone did Chapter 3, etc. You get the point. And so we, after we finished our movies, we edited the clips together making it into one big movie although the teachers did cut some parts out of our individual clips which I don't know why although we had limited time at the assembly when we showed it assembly only goes for like 30 minutes or 40 minutes so my cut my original cut of the movie features every single piece of dialogue and narration from the book and my cut also goes for four minutes long it's an awesome lego 1138 exclusive so it'll only be exclusive to this channel you'll find it nowhere else and the uh, school cut which you'll probably never see again only went for one minute the school cut of my clip of their movie so I hope you enjoy this clip, please subscribe and like and comment, this is just something I wanted to share with you guys, some of you might already know about this, some of you don't, so I'm just going to leave you to watch the video, I'll see you next time. No one would have believed that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's. That is, men busied themselves about their various concerns. They were scrutinised and studied. Perhaps as a man with a microscope might scrutinise the creatures that swarm in a multiplier in a drop of water. Intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded Earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. The inhabitants of Mars see a morning star of hope. Our own warmer planet, green with vegetation and grey with water. Before we judge them too harshly, we must remember what ruthless and utter destruction our own species has wrought. Not only upon animals, such as the vanished bison and the dodo but upon its own ethereal mm. races. The Tasmanians who were entirely swept out of existence in a war waged by European immigrants. Men watched the red planet, but failed to interpret the fluctuating appearances of the markings they mapped so well. All that time the Martians must have been getting ready. <laughs> The storm burst upon us six years ago now. There was a huge outbreak of incandescent gas upon the planet. Yet the next day, there was nothing of this in the papers except a little note in the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> the world went in ignorance of one of the gravest dangers that ever threatened the human race. I might not have heard of the eruption at all had I not met Ogilvy, the astronomer. He was immensely excited about the news, and in the excess of his feelings invited me up to take a turn with him that night in a scrutiny of the Red Planet. Ogilvy looked through the telescope and saw a circle of deep blue, but so little it was, a pin's had a light, but it was invisible to me. No, it's just a meteorite. No, this is serious. When the object lands tomorrow, we'll investigate more. Hold it! Another flash! I'll be going now, Ilgoli. Okay, I'll watch the meteorite closely. Another burst of light! That's enough watching tonight. Yes, I give up. For now. How about a chat? Your place? Yeah, sure. Either there are people on Mars, or there is a deadly meteor shower. 
Most unlikely there would be people on Mars. I believe you. The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one. I see a flare on Mars! It's getting bigger! There's a burst of gas coming from Mars! Hundreds of observers saw the flame that night and the night after, about midnight. And so for ten nights, a flame each night. Even the daily papers woke up to the disturbances at last. And, all unsuspected, those missiles the Martians had fired at us drew earthward, hour by hour, day by day, nearer and nearer. It seems to me now almost incredibly wonderful that people could go about their own petty concerns as they did. For my own part, I was much occupied into learning to ride the bicycle. One night, I went for a walk with my wife. It was starlight, and I explained the signs of the zodiac to her. And I pointed out Mars, a bright dot of light creeping zenithward towards which so many telescopes were pointed. From the railway station in the distance came the sound of shunting trains ringing and rumbling. My wife pointed out to me the brightness of the red, green and yellow signal lights hanging in a framework against the sky. It seemed so safe and tranquil. 